Well, it's time to meet our first guest tonight, and he made it back into the Collingwood side just last week in time for the Anzac Day game. Please give a big welcome to Collingwood Live via Brad Dick. <laughs> Well, it's always good to have the stars of the competition, Brad, on the show. And, uh, well, on the weekend against uh, Essendon, it's always a big occasion. You know, not nearly 90-odd thousand people there at the MCG. And it must be fantastic to play in front of a crowd that well. And as we could see, Essendon came back there in the latter stages there and looked like they might have pipped you on the post there. But your defence and just the Collingwood experience just held out in the end. So a good victory for the Pies. Yeah, it was a good game. Um, they came at us and, um, yeah, we uh, managed to uh, kick some more goals in the... Uh, late, late, uh, late bit of the quarter there, so yeah, it was good, good to get a win and good crowds there. Now you must have been a little bit frustrated because you're the sub and you don't get a lot of game time these days when you're the sub, do you? You're lucky to get a quarter. Yeah, um, well, it made me feel even more nervous just sitting on the, on the pine, just waiting, uh, waiting to get on, but I uh, got on in the last quarter there, so it was good. Brad, how, how do you uh, mentally prepare knowing you're going to be the sub and you might come on in the third quarter? How, how did you prepare for that? Uh, I just sort of just went, uh, did the, through, through my routine, like every, every game, but um, just, yeah, um, yeah, just sitting on the fine, which is, wasn't that good, but uh, I think that's it, bro. So, yeah. Brad, whenever a lot of people talk about you, they say that Mick's one of your, well, you're one of Mick's favourite sons. I don't know if, if it's true or not, but <laughs> how do you used to get on? <laughs> yeah, no, Mick's good. He's always yeah. been good, good to me. Um, because he encourages yeah. you to run the ball and bounce and take him on, doesn't he? Yeah, he, uh, yeah, he, he encouraged me to do that. He thinks I'm pretty fast, and I don't know if I am anymore. But yeah, no, nah, it's, it's it's good to uh, uh, get like, that recognition from Nick Mulder. So. Brad, when you come on here, mate, just pump yourself up, mate. <laughs> <laughs> don't, just don't hold him back, mate. Yeah. <laughs> just go for it. Mate. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just want to ask you this. There's about five of your brother boys down there, OK, and all the brother boys have got egos and who's the best and tri party tricks. Seriously, who's the best down there with all the party tricks? You've got Wellingham, Cracker, yourself, young Eugle down there as well, and obviously Leon Davis, but seriously, like another brothers are watching, you can tell them now who's the best. Oh, you can't go past Leon. Oh, that was nice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the stuff that he does at training just um, amazes me, you know, till this day, just kicking bananas and they're always trying... Uh, me and him trying to have competitions every now and then, and, but yeah. So Leon, like, Andrew, and you see uh, Andrew's uh, goal against—I yeah, think it was in his first match. Mate, the one why, against Port Adelaide. That was pretty. Why good. are you kicking me under the table for? <laughs> 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 hey, Brett, just um, it's great to see you back out in the ground, and um, you know I know you've suffered a few injuries, but you know your your just enthusiasm—it's just infectious, mate. And, you know, it's great to see that big smile and oh, why you know, when you kick kiss? them off. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure the Collingwood fans would be just ecstatic to have you back out there, Craig. But just, just on your injury, mate, you shut up, Ronnie, for a sec, will you? Oh, Trying to ask some questions. <laughs> but, but, well, it is. I really mean oh, it. Spit it's it great. out, Bobby. Come on, get that door but just on, <laughs> Let me finish, Ronnie. I'm trying clown. to. <laughs> just on your injuries, Brad, it set you back a bit. 2009, you suffered a knee injury. How Presty sort of supported you a lot through that injury. And, and tell us a little bit about it. You miss him at the club, and he was he was important around that time for you. Yeah, he was like because um, me and him shared a locker, oh, one locker down, and um, he he was in rehab too with his foot, and uh, me and him just did weights all day every day together. So yeah, I mean, he was good to me, and like um, yeah, we all the boys I think miss him down there at the moment. But he pops his head in now and then, so it's good to see him. Brad, let's talk about um, Leon Davis. That's Thorpe's adopted son, man. He's always <laughs> pumping him up every week, giving him votes in the Mungrook Player of the Year. Doesn't even answer his phone calls anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, well, he's been tried down back this yeah. year and it looks like he's made a successful transition down there because on the weekend he was fantastic and just with his poise and his skill and his run and he's really cool under pressure, Leon. I thought he played really well on the weekend and it looked like he might have found a player down back. Yeah, he's been good. Um, Mick trialled him out into the NAB Cup Series and he went well and... Um... I think uh, arguably he's the best kick going around at Collingwood there. So um, his skills is top class, I reckon. Yep. Is, is, we know why Mickey Malta has always given him a licence to roam in that forward line, but just his body language and uh, he just seems to be really going to another level, just really enjoying, um, obviously it seems like he's just let the shackles off him and just do what you want to do and, uh, and really enjoying his uh, football at the moment. Yeah, he looks like he's enjoying his football there. He, um, 
uh, popped up down forward uh, late in that last quarter to try and mm. kick a goal there, but he, he missed one. Um, but yeah, he, look, he looks good down back, I reckon. Brad, yeah. you feel in the pinch a little bit with Andrew Cracker? Because your forward line's such potent and, and there's some great smalls there. It just makes it a bit tougher to get, get in that side. And are you, How are you feeling about that? You feeling challenged by that a bit? Yeah, that's the best thing about Collingwood. Like, um, there's always boys, there's a lot of boys in the VFL, like Johnny McCarthy and Brent McCaffer, um, pushing to get a game. So you're always trying to do your best when you get a chance. So. That's probably the best thing. A lot of boys always pushing and you, up. And you throw a little Blair in there as well. He's put a lot of pressure yeah. in that forward line as well. Yeah, he's, he's been going good. Yeah, I reckon one player that's improved out of sight the last couple of years and he played good in the grand final, the Duke, Sherrod Wellingham. He was on the rookie list, but every time I watch him, he just uses class. He's really important for Colin, particularly when things are tight. Sherrod Wellingham's really good in heavy traffic and he's a really good player. Yeah, he is. He um, put a lot of weight on over the, over the summer and um, he, he's their yeah, ball handling skills. He's kicking his... Uh, get better now, and so yeah, he's going to be good. All right, now, Brad, we've got some um, questions coming in on our Facebook site there, and uh, the question says, "This comes from Don actually. He says, how are, how are your shoulders holding up? And what time of or what type of weight training have you been uh, doing to put on strength in them?" Um, I, I had my special um, weights program, like I had to do obviously the rehab program for my shoulder stuff, but then I got um, Lukey Vella, he's a uh, fitness coach down there. And uh, me and him been doing specialised weights, just a lot of upper body stuff, shoulder stuff. So it's, it's good now, it's holding up real well. In, in the green room, just before I heard Robbie and Brad talking, and when Robbie was, used to be at Collingwood, he was talking about this lady that used to be a great cook. Brad acknowledged him. Give her a mention now, boys. I don't know her. Yeah, I'd just like, <laughs> Robbie, I'd like, Robbie, I'd like to say Brad? hello to Anne. She was there when I was there in 1995 yeah. and she's still there today, so... How you awesome. going, Anne? She yeah. was my house mother when I first come down. Awesome. She brought you up well. Yeah. All right, well, let's go to the Collingwood <laughs> Magpie game. The big one on the weekend, Sunday at the MCG. It's a Twilight game. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. As you can see, uh, the most important player injured at the moment for Collingwood there is Nathan Brown, and uh, teams haven't been announced yet, Gilly. But let's swing across now to the Doggies and have a look at their injuries because there's one big injury down at the Bulldogs. That's Barry Hall with an ankle injury, Gilly, and I reckon... Good chance he won't play. Again? Yeah. Oh, well, look, that's going to be... That's going to, well, it's going to give a young kid an opportunity, and whoever that is, I hope he has a go. But, gee, you've got some problems down there at Bulldog land. And it could Collingwood, be a blessing, just Randy. Unchanged. It could be a blessing for the Bulldogs, I reckon. It's, it just means some of the younger forwards need to step up. The Grants, the Roughheads. They're too mm. one-dimensional down there, I reckon. Well, what? And it's going to... Yeah, you're probably right, Thorby. One of the Bulldog players that has stood up was Justin Sherman on the weekend. Kicked four goals, coming from Brisbane. He's settled in a little bit. But uh, you're right, Higgins and, and those small forwards, Jared Grant, they just don't kick enough goals for the Doggies. They rely too much on Barry Hall. Grant, just a question for yourself. You're a mad Bulldogs man. Mate, are you happy with the way Rocket's going at the moment? And Nathan Jakuri, you got him over from Geelong. What to play in Williamstown? Uh, I think Rodney Eater will be under a fair bit of pressure because we've got Collingwood this week and then we've got Sydney. Uh, the Bulldogs aren't travelling very well at all at the moment and, uh, geez, uh, you know, for them to beat Collingwood on the weekend and that would be one of the upsets of the year. So the Doggies, they're really struggling. They look lethargic and they look very, very slow. And they've been, they're supposed to have really good fitness people down there, but they don't look very, very fit to me. Yeah, well, the guys on the panel, we don't look fit, fit either. But um, <laughs> for just the other thing is... Um, for yourself. I, was, no, I actually watched the Bulldogs. I actually watched the Bulldogs and uh, I see a lot of them just... Uh, they're, when they come through the midfield and uh, they've just been lobbing the football too much on Barry Hall's head. Like, yeah. he's been leading. I don't know whether they're, they're going one or two, two or three handballs too much through the midfield because as yeah. a forward, you lead, you miss that opportunity. And uh, yeah. he's obviously backpedalling. I think um, yeah. I think the delivery coming through the middle, they're just, they're, he's yeah. actually timing his, his, yeah. his, his uh, lead wrong and yeah. they've just been bobbing up on his head a lot. Ronnie, you make a lot of sense tonight, which is unusual. <laughs> um, but, uh, Try and answer a serious question. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Down. <laughs> no, you're exactly right there, Ronnie. They should kick it to him on the lead. They kick head height all the time. He played got, a centre forward. He was on one leg, so I'm not sure. I just what got, got, got Brad Dick's mobile phone. We've got to go to tip now, Paul. Collingwood, just quick. Collingwood, is it going to take nice an hour? Played Monday, big game for him. Could be. Right, so you're picking, you're picking the Bulldogs, Thorpey, for a change? No, I'm staying with Collingwood. Okay, game. Collingwood for you, Thorpey. <laughs> Collingwood. Collingwood. Oh, easy, the pie. Pies. Easy, easy. Brad, no use asking you, but Gilly? Pies. Pies for me too, Gilbert. If the Bulldogs win, I'll watch Rodney Eads' car. Let me tell you that, mate, because we've got no way. Let's go to our next game. Sydney taking on Carlton. Friday night at the FCG. Let's have a look at the Sydney injury list there. And uh, 
Well, Bradshaw, when, he, when he's fit, he'd definitely been playing in that team. We don't know when he's going to come back. Malcheski's out for another three or four weeks. He had that last surgery as well, Gilly. So, mm -hmm. uh, but the Swans are up and about at the moment, looking very impressive. And then here's Carlton. Well, Chris Yaron, he hurt his hamstring on the weekend. I reckon he'll make all Australian this year. Oh, it's round five. Big rap. I don't want to put the moz on him. Big rap. Big rap, but he's probably too fit. That's why he's torn his hamstring. Well, they're missing that bloke there, Cruiser, because he's their number one player, I reckon. Key they position player, in. Gilly, you oh, think? Look, they or need, they when need he comes him back. because... Uh, Wake can't do it up forward because he's a bit of a loose cannon and yeah. he worries about what's going on around him instead of worrying about the team. All right, let's talk about Sydney Thorpe, your former club and a uh, great boat next year, Robbie's former club as well. But they've got a lot of tall forwards. So that Carlton defence, not very big. I mean, Jamison and a few of those guys down back, they're going to be really up against people like White, Adam Goods. You know, the, the, the height, I reckon, could be a factor down there, Thorpe. Yeah, the, and White's been in good form. And good, as we know, Good's really reliable. He goes back there, Grant kicks a few goals. And, you know, I think their forward line are going to be... What I love about Sydney, Brad, you can probably give us a bit of insight, but they're just their one-on-one -on -one footy, and they're, they're just so great around the stoppages. And, I mean, they're just so hard to get the, you know... Yeah, to... the best thing about Sydney is that, like you said, one-on-one, -on -one, a lot of in-and-under players, um, like Kieran Jack, I think he's... He last year had an outstanding year, and uh, he's gone good this year too. So, yeah, contested footy is a big thing for them. Right? The other thing I want to... Uh, Brad, the, the bye, we've never had it. OK, it's affected some sides. We see Adelaide have a bye. They come out a couple of weeks ago and got belted. And, uh, obviously, uh, Bulldogs again. How, how, do you, how would you come off, like, um, you know, come up with that with the bye? I mean, mentally as well. And then you have that weekend off. And I mean, I know you train on the weekend, yeah. but that must throw things... Throw the uh, sides off at the moment. Is it has it? They're professional footballers, Ronnie. <laughs> but it's different. It's never had, happened before, Gil. <laughs> yes, it has. It happened four or five years ago. When? The split round? No, when but Paul this has happened with sides. How are they going to affect them mentally to come up again? It's affected mm. a couple of clubs already. What's um, your thoughts on what's it? What's your thoughts on it? Yeah, um, I'll, we'll, we'll have to yeah, find out. When, um, we'll see when we find out. Sorry. Yeah, so, oh, Brad, I'll ask you. Well, it did Gilbert. happen in the early 90s. <laughs> it did but let's happen, go bro. across to... It did okay, happen in the early 90s. But let's talk oh, about... You wasn't Carlton. playing. You wasn't playing then. Oh, I'm going to have to referee you two in a minute. I'll tell you what. I'm trying to get a word in here. Yes, it's on. Andrew Walker at Carlton. They nearly got rid of him over the uh, pre-season there. He stayed at the club. They tried to they put him down the forward line now. Mm. He was fantastic on the weekend. He stood up and actually got to watch this game on TV. That's the best and, game I've seen him play all year. Yes, and I think Andrew, we've seen him take a good high mark there, but he's not really a key position player so he's probably better suited just raving yeah. the packs but he was in, he's in great form at the moment He is, and I reckon with, with a player like him, he's one of them blokes I know you've got to worry about the team when the team comes first but he's a player, he's a horses for courses if he's not going good in the forward line, put him in the back line he if he's be... not going good in the back line, put him in the forward line that's, that's how it and is And that's with a him. good thing about him, I suppose, Gil he's versatile, Don't but cut in front Brett, of me, Brett, Ratton <laughs> must, <laughs> Brett Ratton must get frustrated with him, Grant, I mean, we've seen him play he could be one of the elite footballers in the competition we know he can play, yeah. right. but his consistency is probably less so him So, Thorpe, you're picking Carlton on the weekend? No, I'm going for Sydney, Grant Sydney, OK Ooh. Ooh. Robbie Armour Sydney all the way, mate Sydney Rock and Ronnie. Look at that, Robbie uh, Matt kick won that goal kicking uh, goal of the year. Yeah. Oh. His opponent was on the bench when he won it. <laughs> but um, I'm going to tip Carlton, mate. Okay, Carlton. <laughs> Brad? Yeah, I think um, Sydney up there. Yeah. <laughs> Gilly, just, just for the record, the last four games, Sydney have won three against Carlton, so I'm sticking with Sydney. Is this game in Melbourne or Sydney? <laughs> You're not paying attention nah, tonight. No, it's in Sydney. It's in Sydney, brother. It's in Sydney. Sydney. Okay. Well, sorry, brother. Brad, thanks for joining us tonight, mate. Yeah, good luck for the rest of the season. And, uh, yeah, we hope you have a good one. All right. There we go, folks.